Welcome back. Now that we've added HTTP endpoints to our serverless framework service, we can add these endpoints into our front-end application. Now, if you're following along and you can't remember what your front-end application should expect for those endpoints, you can use serverless info to get information about your service, including the endpoints you just created. So right here, I have both my post endpoint that will allow people to vote on songs and my get endpoint that will allow people to see what the votes for songs are. So with both of these endpoints here, I can prepare my front end application a little bit more thoroughly. Now, in order to use these, we'll need to use some JavaScript to make requests against them. Currently, our website is pretty bare bones. It just says, hello again, serverless. Now, if we want to upgrade this and get a little bit more action here, what we can do is actually reference some of the code for this course. That's found both at this link you see here, and also if you want to find the same link, you can look at the descriptions for this video. Now, in this particular case, we'll be looking at the code inside of integrating our API frontend right here under 4.5, and you can clone or download this repository and then get the code inside of that to keep going. Now, I've already done this and downloaded my code locally, so what I'll need to do is actually copy the front end inside of 4.5 integrating API front end into my current repository. I'm also going to override the index.html that I currently have and replace it with the one inside of this front end. So let's go back to our application and see how we could do this. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen here, and let's replace this current front end folder with the front end in my downloads folder in 4.5. So I'm gonna go ahead and do copy dash R and we'll do tilde for the home directory slash downloads because that's currently in a Mac operating system where my downloads are. And then we'll look for the folder that we want which is serverless learn serverless jams master. And inside of this, we'll be able to find the 4.5 section which is the code for this particular portion of the course. Then inside of here, I'll be able to go and copy this front end. Now, I want to copy it locally to this directory inside of the front end directory, so I'm going to type that out there and then hit enter. Now, that's a bit of a long command, but it should do all this here. Now, it looks like I put my front end actually inside of my current front end directory. And this will let me look at it and make sure that I want to replace what's currently in the index.html file with which with everything that's in the new index.html file. Now this does look like what I would expect here, so I can go ahead and fix that command really quickly. Let's delete the contents of that front-end directory that we just added, and instead of downloading it into the front-end folder here, we're just going to download it into the current folder and replace the contents of the front-end directory. So let's go ahead and do that there, and now we'll see that it's overridden the previous index.html file with this new one here. So what is this? What does this look like? Well, let's take a peek. The way we're going to do that is I'm actually going to spin up a local web server here. You could also just open index.html, but it won't properly serve all the CSS and JavaScript files necessarily unless you have a web server running and actually displaying this. Now I have Python installed on my machine, so I'm going to use that, but you could use any other web server that you might have a preference for. Or maybe you've got a node web server that you're familiar with. In order to use Python here, I'm going to list the contents of the current directory, and then I'm going to change into my front-end directory here. Now, this has my index.html file, so this is where I want to be. And then I'm going to do Python 3 in this case, and I'm going to use dash M for module. And Python has an HTTP module that has a server inside of it for hosting stuff like this locally and just spinning it up so I can see it. So currently it should be serving on localhost or 0.0.0.0 colon 8000. And let's go over there and open that up. Now it looks like currently the link was a little bit confused inside of my editor. That's because it also copied this uh, parenthesis here. So I need to fix that and click again. And now we have my serverless jam site running locally. Now this is really just designed to be a pretty simple basic example of what we could do with a front end application that might allow us to vote on different songs. Now feel free to go in here and play some of the different music from these songs and decide which ones you want to vote on yourself. But what I'll actually be doing next is replacing portions of my front end code with what I need in order to get the site working properly. Now one other thing to notice is currently I have these four zeros here and then colon 8000. But to get this to work properly with later parts of this demo, I'll need to actually use localhost colon 8000 instead of the 0000. And you see here that this song selection actually appeared as soon as I did that. The reason for that being that localhost is going to allow us to get some of my backend code to work correctly 
whereas the four zeros won't work correctly. So keep that in mind as you continue on in this tutorial and future videos that I'll be working with this application. So next up, let's go back to the code here and let's dive into what the JavaScript is actually doing and what the HTML is actually doing. Basically, we've created a pretty simple application that has some different menus. It's got us a, that has some different menus and it's also got a few different sections for voting on our favorite serverless music. So what that's gonna allow us to do is have these different songs that we want displayed to our users. And then we're also gonna allow them to vote on particular songs inside of this list. Now, each of these songs are pre-selected by us in the HTML. Later on, we could maybe set up a more dynamic website that allows us to search through all our favorite songs and find them. But for right now, we'll keep these three. Next up, it'll allow us to press a big red button and then vote on the song that we like the best. So how's it gonna do all of this? It doesn't have any additional code inside of index.html that does much more than show what these songs are and actually allow them to be played. So all that code is gonna be inside app.js. Right in here, we have a function that's going to trigger whenever we press this red button. And that's going to record a vote on our different songs. Now, if we actually scroll down to where this record vote is defined, a little bit lower down here, we'll see that it's gonna try and find the currently selected song. So if we go back to index.html, if we select something like coderitis and then press vote, that's how it's gonna get that value and then send that along to an API endpoint. Now, record vote itself calls this vote for song function, which is just right up here. What this does is actually sends a fetch request over to a post endpoint, and it's gonna use this vote endpoint variable to actually decide where it's going. Now this will send some stringified JSON over to that endpoint and actually hit our API gateway API. But we have to define this up above. So we'll need to change this vote endpoint to what our current endpoint is. So let's find out what that is. Let's use serverless info and grab that post endpoint one more time. And then let's go ahead and replace the current one with whatever our endpoint is. Keep in mind yours will be different than mine. And we're also gonna need to make sure that if there's any overwriting of our formatting here that adds an additional enter or return character in there, we wanna remove that so it's just a simple string here that looks like this. Now next I'm gonna also need to put in the git endpoint here. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that in there and we can do this at the exact same time. And after I've saved this file, it should have updated these vote endpoints and the git vote endpoint so that we can properly both vote on different songs and get the votes for those different songs. Now, if I scroll down a little further to where we're actually using the git votes endpoint, you'll see that inside of this refresh vote counts function, we're going to fetch the contents of git votes endpoint. So let's go and let's actually test that out in our browser here. Let's paste this URL into our browser here, and then you'll see that we have a bunch of test votes that we had already made, along with some votes that we made on the actual songs. So with all this correctly working in our browser, we should be able to integrate it into our front-end application. The only other thing you need to know about the rest of this code is that it's really just doing this whenever the page is loaded. For example, this setVotes function will happen every time we call this refreshVoteCounts function. So if we go in here, and we look for the set votes here, that's essentially just gonna update everything that's happening inside of our application every time we either do a vote or load the page or update parts of the UI. So now with all this saved, let's go ahead and make sure we save and close app.js and everything here should be working properly. So let's go back and refresh this localhost page one more time. So now that I've refreshed it, you'll see that we have Coderitis, Stateless, and Dynamo still, but they now have updated vote counts from four and two and zero. So let's also try what happens if we vote again for Coderitis. So I'm gonna go over here and click vote. And it looks like it's updated our Coderitis to five. Now, if I refresh this page again, you'll see that it's currently still at five, even if I'm doing Command Shift R in Chrome to hard refresh the page and make sure we get the updated results. You could even try loading this in an incognito window and going back and forth voting for different things. Now this is pretty cool because it means that our vote counts will remain no matter how many times we load the page or whatever else we do to our site. But next, we need to be able to move this application into the cloud and actually view it at serverlessjams.com. So how should we do this? Well, we can go back to our application here and let's clear the screen just to make this easier. Let's turn off the localhost application because now we know it's working locally. So we don't need to look at that anymore. And let's look at how we could deploy all this new front-end code into our cloud. 
Remember, in serverless.yml, we set up our configuration for serverless finch to deploy into the bucket name we created that we then configured with the S3 bucket website hosting, the Route 53 domain, the CloudFront distribution, and the SSL certificate. And all of that different configuration allowed us to host serverlessjams.com. So if we want to deploy a new version of the site, we'll need to do two things. First, we'll need to use that plugin again by running serverless client deploy to deploy that front end client. And then we're going to need to follow through with the prompts here and say, yes, we want to override everything in the bucket. Then it's going to go through and it's going to upload everything from our front end distribution folder, including the CSS and the JavaScript that we just added and the new index.html file. And now it should be available at this URL. So I can command click this and we can open this up in our browser here. Now it looks like this is properly displaying on this page with the new code that we just deployed. Now if we go back over to serverlessjams.com and refresh the page, it does look like it's not currently loading though. Now the reason for that is because we still need to invalidate the cache for our website in order to see all this updated information that was available inside of the current website URL and was available locally but isn't currently available at serverlessjams.com. So let's do that now. So I've loaded up the AWS console and we can look through the services for CloudFront. And once we find it, we can click in there and we're gonna to need to create an invalidation for this cache. So let's go over to the cache that we know we're using for this CloudFront distribution because it's currently set up with the origin that has the same name as our S3 bucket and the website endpoint that we're using for it. So let's click into there and click in validations. And you can tell I've been testing this application a bit because I have a bunch of invalidations here. These are the ones we just made in the previous video and I'll create a new one. So let's invalidate everything underneath our site. So that's the root slash here and then the star to show that we wanna invalidate every single thing with that wildcard. So let's click invalidate. And then this might take a while depending on where you are in the world and how quickly AWS can go through to all of the cache locations and invalidate everything. But for the most part, you should be able to go back to this page and do a hard refresh on the page. In the browser that I'm using, that's Command Shift R on Mac for Chrome. And as you see here, now that the invalidation has succeeded, we're getting all the new files and we're loading it on serverlessjams.com. Now, if we go in here and we vote for Coderitis a few more times, it looks like we've actually successfully voted and it's recorded it in the database. Now, if I do Command Shift R here again, we're getting back the exact results we expect with the seven votes, the four votes, and the zero votes. Poor old Dynamo hasn't gotten any votes yet, so maybe go correct that later on. Now, this means we've successfully integrated our APIs into our front end application and deployed a new version of our front end that includes those APIs. In future videos, we'll learn how we can add login in order to add authentication and authorization to our application and require that people are signed in before they vote on these particular songs. So stay tuned for how we do that with Auth0 in future videos.